Hello everybody, this is Fausto Fluker here in Refuge Daily. Today I'm thinking about how to reset in our hearts and our minds the awakening of the reality of the days that we're living. Many years ago there used to be the saying, today is the first day of the rest of my life. Today is the first day of the rest of my life kind of sets the tone for us to start again, start fresh, start anew. And my prayer is that we may hear the calling of God to, to listen to His voice, to listen to His still small voice that is saying to us, wake up my child, wake up my child, wake up with the knowledge of His grace, let's wake up with the gift of His strength, Let's wake up with the wonderful blessing that we have to have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us. You see, today I'm thinking about how we need to not only reset, but to awaken, but also to tune in with God. As we spend time in His Word and in prayer, as we seek Him continually with a heart that is hunger and is thirsty for Him, hungry and thirsty for Him. You know, uh, setting up the plan and to really go forward to what God wants to do. Early in the morning, seek Him. Throughout the night, in the vigil of the night, wait on Him. I have a few quotes I would like to give you, and this is... Um, Concerning that there is nothing that makes us love people as much as when we pray for people. Even to pray for our enemies will change your heart, change the perspective in your life. There is nothing that makes us love people so much as to praying for people. Let us be awakened to the desire of God to make us men and women of prayer. St. Augustine said, it is God's passionate pursuit of us that calls us to prayer. It is God's passionate pursuit of us that calls us to prayer. So if you and I realize that there is an urge for praying, praying all the time, pray without ceasing, praying with a full heart, a heartfelt prayer, it is because God is pursuing us passionately. He wants to spend time with us. He wants to talk to us. He wants us to experience His presence. Charles Finney said this, Unless I had the spirit of prayer, I had nothing. The spirit of prayer. I believe that all of us are aware that the foundations of a Christian faith involves prayer. The Word of God, prayer, fellowship, and witness. The Word of God, prayer, fellowship, and witness. We are good at some of those things, but to be good at all four is, is key. To be on the Word, to know His Word, to obey His Word, to share His Word, to pray in season, out of season, be in prayer. Prayer is the ministry of ministries. Also, to have fellowship with one another. Not just like, hey, how are you? Hey, fine. Hey, how you doing? But to really say, hey, do you have a minute? How is your heart? What is God saying to you recently? What have you read in the scriptures this day? And then to kind of go deeper. We are too, too superficial most of the time. We need to learn to dig deeper. So unless I had the spirit of prayer, I had nothing, Charles Fitney said. Also D.L. Moody with a quotation. He said, we ought to see the face of God every morning before we see the face of man. D.L. Moody, we all know about him. He said, we ought to see the face of God every morning before we see the face of man. And you know, I would like to invite you to have that place in your heart where you let the urge of wanting to seek Him early in the morning and throughout the night. The midnight oil is an expression of spending the night working hard, reading, studying, in order to, to meet the, the, the dates that are supposed to have a dead date. I understand that God is working in you and in me, wanting us to hear His calling, wanting us to be men and women of prayer. 
The only way to pray is to pray. And the way to pray well is to pray much. And I believe that more than ever you and I realize that we need to be men and women of prayer. So many scriptures in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament gives us a panoramic view of how important prayer is. How powerful, how effective, and how necessary it is for us to pray. Jesus even said, pray so that you may not enter into temptation. Paul says, pray without ceasing. Pray before you faint. So prayer is important. How can I emphasize it more besides looking at myself and saying, Lord, how much did I pray today? Whom did I pray for? Sometimes we're so selfish. We pray, yes, but we pray, oh, God, help me. Oh, God, give me. Oh, God, see me through this. And, and that's not bad in itself. God says, call upon me and I will show you many, many things, things that you don't know. So God wants us to call upon him. But the prayer of intercess, intercession, that's a powerful thing. When you take time to pray for your spouse, for your children, for your loved ones, when you pray for your pastor, your leaders, your teachers, those in government, that is commanded to us by the Apostle Paul writing the letter to 1 Timothy. So someone said, history belongs to the intercessors. So you see, we are in the midst of history in the making. Let us be men and women of prayer, refuge family. God is calling us to be strengthened by him full of grace, full of love. May the Lord fill us with His Spirit. And as we do that, let's remember Philippians 1, 9 through 11, where he says that the love of God may abound in us in the knowledge of Him. And in Colossians 1, 9 through 12, that says about, may we be filled with the knowledge of His will in all the spiritual wisdom and understanding that we may know and we may walk worthy of Him and pleasing Him in all things, and bringing forth much fruit. So today, I just want to embrace you, you know, talk about social distance, talk about wearing a mask. You cannot see the smile of one another, but you can see the beanie eyes zooming and allowing us to see God's eyes. Eyes are the windows of our soul, and Jesus wants to reach our very soul. You see, Intimacy with God is the place that we need to find. How can I find intimacy with God? There is no other way. There is no shortcut for it but spending time. Spending time with God every day. Just sit at His feet. Crack open the Bible or open your, your gadget and, and read, that, read through the Scriptures. What are you reading lately? What have you been reading? What is God saying to you? Is there something that God... It's been trying to call your attention to, and you've been ignoring it. It is time to say, okay, Lord, I am here. Talk to me, Lord. Do what you need to do, because you know that's the only place that we will find freedom and true joy. We know that for many, many, many years, we discover and we have learned how we try to fix ourselves. We try to do many things, but, you know, it's not until we give our life away that we encounter true fulfillment in our lives. So, so much overload with information takes us to a place of being saturated with things. Let's not get so much information, but get the knowledge of God that brings transformation by the renewing of our minds and by the giving of ourselves over to Jesus as a living sacrifice, which are holy and acceptable unto Him. So my name is Fausto Fluker. And I am leading the Spanish ministry right along with a team that God is building now for over two years. And I'm thankful to be working alongside of Pastor Bill, Pastor Alan, and the staff, and Jeff, and, and all the people that are so beautiful, the Enriched Family, so Refuge Family. So I invite you to not only uh, say I go to church, but go to church consistently. Have you heard about the, the 333 rule? It takes three weeks to get rid of a bad habit, just for three weeks, not overeating not eating sugar and other things that are damaged to you, as well as not having negative thoughts. Three weeks, the three, three, three rule. Three weeks to kick bad habits. But it takes three months of gaining a new habit. Getting up early, seeking God, reading the Bible. Three months of doing it consistently, you'll acquire this new habit in your life, which is a good habit. And then three years 
three years of doing the same thing, reading the Bible, praying, fellowshipping, witnessing, getting up early, spending time with God, doing the chores, being responsible, being punctual, on and on and on. Three consecutive years will make it part of your lifestyle. And that's our prayer, that our lives may shine in this darkened world, that our lives may give hope to this hopeless world, and that this day, today, you will think about what you heard in this Moments Together in Refuge Daily. Thank you for tuning in. Please pray for us, pray for one another, pray for the will of God to fill our hearts and to fill our minds. Until next time, God bless you. Amen.